And you will answer me. Well, I'm forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, Willie. And we're ready for lesson 327 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the original edition here on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Or happy... Well, we're going to learn some other words for it. Uh, what were they? International Day of Mourning and uh, Unthanksgiving. Anyway, but anyway, happy Thanksgiving. Always be thankful. <laughs> Lesson 327 here on Thursday, November 23rd of 2023. I need but call and you will answer me. Are we doing the calling? Are we asking for help when we see we need it? Are we even aware that we need help? When we feel that little stab of irritation, that's when you need help. <laughs> or that outright assault or anger, that's when you need help. I need but call, and you will answer me. I am not asked to take salvation on the basis of an unsupported faith. For God has promised he will hear my call and answer me himself. Let me but learn from my experience that this is true, and faith in him must surely come to me. This is the faith that will endure and take me farther and still farther on the road that leads to him. For thus I will be sure that he has not abandoned me and loves me still, awaiting but my call to give me all the help I need to come to him. I need but call and you will answer me. And the prayer says, Father, I thank you that your promises will never fail in my experience, if I but test them out. Let me attempt, therefore, to try them and to judge them not. Your word is one with you. You give the means whereby conviction comes and surety of your abiding love is gained at last. I need but call and you will answer me. And, of course, that's one of our main things we want to keep in mind is that to be aware of when you've lost your peace and ask for help and get your miracle, a new way of perceiving it, a new, a new way. If you're, if you're sick or, or hurt or, or, or you see turmoil or conflict, whatever comes to your uh, experience, ask for help. I need but call and you will answer me. I think our problem, we just don't call enough. That's why I try to encourage everyone to do what, the, what our course is telling us to do, which is take a long meditation in the morning and one in the evening to where you really still your, your mind and you leave the world. And, and yet you're aware and awake and calling on God. And then throughout the day, bolster up that, um, that commitment. Today being I need but call and you will answer me. Bolster that up every hour of the day with something to give thanks for and to say the lesson to the, for the day and to have a moment of pause to bring that, that quiet into the moment. I need but call and you will answer me. Our associated reading is what is creation. Creation is the sum of all God's thoughts in number infinite and everywhere without all limit. Only love creates and only like itself. There was no time when all that it created was not there, nor will there be a time when anything that it created suffers any change. Forever and forever are God's thoughts exactly as they were and as they are, unchanged through time and after time is done. God's thoughts are given all the power that their own Creator has, for He would add to love by its extension. Thus His Son shares in creation and must therefore share in power to create. What God has willed to be forever one, 
will still be one when time is over and will not be changed throughout the course of time, remaining as it was before the thought of time began. Creation is the opposite of all illusions, for creation is the truth. Creation is the Holy Son of God, for in creation is His will complete in every aspect, making every part container of the whole. Its oneness is forever guaranteed and violet, forever held within His holy will beyond all possibility of harm, of separation, imperfection, and of any spot upon its sinlessness. We are creation, we the sons of God. We seem to be discreet and unaware of our eternal unity with Him, yet back of all our doubts, past all our fears, there still is certainty. For love remains with us, for love remains with all its thoughts, its sureness being theirs. God's memory is in our holy minds, which know their oneness and their unity with their Creator. Let our function be only to let this memory return, only to let God's will be done on earth, only to be restored to sanity, and to be but as God created us. Our Father calls to us. We hear His voice and we forgive creation in the name of its Creator, holiness itself, whose holiness His own creation shares, whose holiness is still a part of us. I need but call, and you will answer me. Okay, well, let's uh, go look in our uh, Manual for Teachers reading for today. And we're ready for, what is the peace of God? What is the peace of God? And as you're, it's number uh, 20. And while you're turning there, let me tell, tell you about what on earth is going on today around the world as far as ho holy days, holidays, and observances. Uh, at Thanksgiving, like I said, and also uh, today is, I wanted to mention these other ones, uh, National Day of Mourning and Unthanksgiving Day. And, you know, those started with the American Indian Movement in the early 70s, I'm pretty sure. Uh, there was a, na a man named Wansuta, uh, and Frank, Frank James, uh, was his English name, and and he um, he kind of he was part of the uh, I think he was part of the Wampanoag tribe, and he realized that um, or he just wanted to bring notice that uh, that we need to think about the um, what colonialization and the Dawes Act mentality did to the native people here. And we need to make some kind of uh, change in our our thoughts. And I think it is changing. I think people are starting to respect, uh, more and more respect uh, Native ways and uh, honor people for for the cultures that they, that they, not thinking they need to be converted to, to some other religion and wear shoes and have a, a, a different name and a different language. I think we're going beyond that, I hope. We sure need to spread the word, and we can do that in Thanksgiving or unThanksgiving or International is it National Day of Mourning? Okay, and then also eat a cranberry day, <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll, we'll talk here in a minute about cranberries again. Uh, matter of fact, we had a lot. Of, so wait, Fibonacci day, which uh, the Fibonacci sequence was. Uh, by an Italian mathematician in the 1200s, Leonardo Bonacci. And uh, it's a sequence of increasing numbers. It starts with zero, then goes to one, then it goes to uh, two and three, five, eight, 13, 21. And what it does, it takes the last two numbers, adds them together, and that gets your next number. So after 21 would be 34, 13 and 21 equals 34. And you just keep going up. And that's the, the, the Fibonacci sequence. And that's a spiral that you see in nature where it's increasing magnitude. International Image Consultant Day. And that's a good thing to, to consider. Uh, 
particularly for businesses and enterprises. And, um, you know, we want to have the image of, uh, of love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, National Cashew Day, which we'll talk about cashews in just a minute, too. National Espresso Day. We probably won't talk about espressos. <laughs> uh, uh, National Family Health History Day. Old Clients Day. Turkey Free Thanksgiving. And I used to always make what in our house, a, 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 a turkey's love it turkey, which was basically made out of, I, I'd make it out of beans and tofu and, um, and put all the glazings on it, put the stuffing in it, make it look like a turkey too. <laughs> Kids always kind of enjoyed it. I'd bring the turkey in and say, well, he doesn't have to die. Or, so we'll just call this the turkey's love it turkey. Um, and then uh, Wolfenhut, Wolfenhut, <laughs> A day of celebrating canines uh, started by a, a kid somewhere um, here in the last 20 years or so. Uh, cranberry, Stevens Cranberry, it's a, a vaccinium uh, macrocarpon, and out of ed edible landscaping, it says of this particular variety, uh, Stevens Cranberry is very popular variety being planted commercially in the Northwest and the Northeastern U.S., Large fruit, native, space one foot circle, zones three through seven. And of course, we talked yesterday about the cranberry, that Ben Lear. And I just was kind of neat knowing that they're an, a, a, a perennial evergreen. Get them planted and take good care of them and they'll be there. And then also I want to tell you about cashews. Uh, they're in the family, the Anacardaceae uh, and Anacardium. Occidental are the cashews, and what I thought was interesting, well, I mean, let me just read what it says here, and I found this on yarden.com. Cashews and trees, cashew trees are extremely easy to grow, but that is where the straightforward nature of this tree ends. The cashew, more than any widely consumed nut, is far more than it appears. Most nuts are simply tree seeds, but cashew nuts are the seed and the fruit. The cashew apple, which appears above each swollen nut, is actually the swollen stem end of the branch where each nut grows. The bright red juicy cashew apples are sweet and edible, and I heard from one fellow he makes the juice out of them. Uh, with, uh, evidently makes good juice. With care, you can also harvest your own cashew nuts from cashew trees. Cashew trees can be grown in the ground in USDA zones nine through 11, you can also grow a cashew tree in a container if you are limited in space or live in zones four through eight. Mature cashew trees will reach a height of 12 feet and a width of 15 feet. They are self-fertile, prefer full to partial sun, and are fast growing. Please note, it says, cashews themselves aren't toxic, but they are surrounded by a shell that consists of the toxic oil urashiol, Urishiol. Coming into contact with urishiol can cause itching, blisters, and skin rashes. So handle with care. And that family, the Anacardaceae, are also the same family that taxichondrons are in, which you've got taxichondron radicans, which is poison ivy, taxichondron uh, pubicins, which is poison oak, and taxichondron vernix, which is poison sumac. And they all have that same oil. And that's what makes people break out that are uh, toxic or allergic to it, which many people are. Okay, is that everything I wanted to tell you about that's going on today? Uh, there's a good video on, online. It's called Goosebumps. Most detailed near-death experience ever recorded. John J. Davis, Next Level Soul podcast with Alex Ferrari. It's one hour and eight minutes and eight seconds or five seconds. And he said in that, right at the end, before he came back into his body, Jesus told him, he said, you must tell them there is no death. <laughs> that sounds like something that our master would tell us. Let everybody know there's nothing to fear. I rose from the dead, and, and you will too. Okay. 
Uh, let me get this set up so we'll be ready to continue on and I won't have to reach over here and grab my papers again. I need but call and you will answer me. Okay, what is the peace of God? It has been said that there is a kind of peace that is not of this world. And of course, that reminded me of Philippians 4, 7 that says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. So, um, a peace which passeth all human, human understanding, you might think of it as. It has been said that there is a kind of peace that is not of this world. How is it recognized? How is it found? And being found, how can it be retained? Well, let us consider each of these questions separately, for each reflect a different step along the way. First, how is it recognized? How can the peace of God be recognized? God's peace is recognized at first by just one thing. In every way, it is totally unlike all previous experiences. It calls to mind nothing that went before. It brings with it no past associations. It is a new thing entirely. There is a contrast, yes, between this thing and all the past. But strangely, it is not a contrast of true differences. The past just slips away and in its place is everlasting quiet. Only that. The contrast first perceived has merely gone. Quiet has reached to cover everything. Wow, a peace that is limitless quietness. Uh, in the second question, how is it found? In paragraph three, how is this quiet found? No one can fail to find it who but seeks out its conditions. God's peace can never come where anger is, for anger must deny that peace exists. So if you feel some anger, what are you going to do? You can do your lesson for the day today, being what? I need but call, and you will answer me. That's a, a prayer, huh? God's peace can never come where anger is, for anger must deny that peace exists. Who sees anger as justified in any way or any circumstance proclaims that peace is meaningless and must believe that it cannot exist. So we want to go ahead of time and recognize that in every circumstance that we confront, we won't need to use anger because we want to have eternal peace. In this condition, peace cannot be found where, where we justify anger. Therefore, forgiveness is the necessary condition for finding the peace of God. More than this, given forgiveness, there must be peace. For what except attack will lead to war? And what but peace is opposite to war? Here the initial contrast stands out clear and apparent. Yet when peace is found, the war is meaningless. And it is conflict now that is perceived as non-existent and unreal. <laughs> Number three. And then the third uh, question, and being found, how can it be retained? How is the peace of God retained once it is found? In paragraph four, returning anger in whatever form will drop the heavy curtain once again, and the belief that peace cannot exist will certainly return. War is again accepted as the one reality. Now must you once again lay down your sword, although you may not recognize that you have picked it up again. But you will learn as you remember even faintly now what happiness was yours without it, that you must have taken it again as your defense. Stop for a moment now and think of this. Is conflict what you want, or is God's peace the better choice? <laughs> Which gives you more. A tranquil mind is not a little gift. Would you not rather live than choose to die? Paragraph 5. Living is joy, but death can only weep. You see in death escape from what you made, but this you do not see, that you made death, and it is but illusion of an end. Death cannot be escaped, because it is not life in which the problem lies. Life has no opposite, for it is God. Life and death seem to be opposites because you have decided that death ends life. Forgive the world, 
and you will understand that everything which God created cannot have an end, and nothing he did not create is real. In this one sentence is our course explained. In this one sentence is our practicing given its one direction. And in this, the Holy Spirit's whole curriculum is specified exactly as it is. So let's read that sentence again. Forgive the world, and you will understand that everything which God created cannot have an end, and nothing he did not create is real. Of course, that echoes our very first introduction, where he says nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And the last paragraph for today, what is the peace of God? No more than this, the simple understanding that his will is holy without opposite. There is no thought that contradicts his will yet can be true. The contrast between his will and yours but seem to be reality. In truth, there is no conflict because his will is yours. Now is the mighty will of God himself his gift to you. He does not seek to keep it for himself. Why would you seek to keep your tiny, frail imaginings apart from him? The will of God is one, and all there is. The will of God is one, and all there is. This is your heritage, the universe beyond the sun and stars and all the thoughts of which you can conceive belong to you. God's peace is the condition for his will. Attain his peace. And you will remember him. (laughs) Remember, everything that's going on that's not love is a dream that we're going to wake up from. And how quick are you going to wake up from it? Really is really how willing are you to do our lesson today? I need but call and you will answer me. When you see anything that's not speaking of love, ask for help to re-perceive it and see what has no opposite, love. I need but call and you will answer me. I am not asked to take salvation on the basis of an unsupported faith, for God has promised he will hear my call and answer me himself. Let me but learn from my experience that this is true, and faith in him must surely come to me. This is the faith that will endure and take me farther and still farther on the road that leads to him. For thus I will be sure that he has not abandoned me and loves me still awaiting but my call to give me all the help I need to come to him. Father, I thank you that your promises will never fail in my experience if I but test them out. Let me attempt, therefore, to try them and to judge them not. Your word is one with you. You give the means whereby conviction comes and surety of your abiding love is gained at last. Wow. So he he doesn't want us to have an unsupported faith and we get the support we need by asking for help. And he gives us help in a form that we can understand, appreciate, experience, and know to be real and solid. Okay, I need but call and you will answer me. Only 
like itself Only love creates And only like itself There was no time That all that it created All that it created Was not there Nor will there be a time suffers any change forever and forever are God's thoughts forever and forever are God's thoughts exactly as they were and as they are a change through time and after time is done a change through time after time is done, God's thoughts are in change through time, and after time is done, only love is real. Find me, but call, and you will answer me. I need, but call, and you will answer me. I need, but call, and you will answer me. I need, but call. How quick will you call when you notice that your peace has been disturbed, the quiet is lost? Will you stop and ask for help? That's the answer you'll always get. I need but call and you will answer me. Peace. Mir? The Russian, Ukrainian way to say it. Almost the same. M I R and M Y R, and I'm not sure I really have the proper pronunciation. Mir? Anyway. Until tomorrow, be sure to call and ask for help if your peace is disturbed in any way. I need but call, and you will answer me. Mir.